pleased about that time for us to start tonight for good to have you in the house of the Lord, all those that have joined us there on the web page and Facebook Live. Part of the way they join in on, we're just thankful that they would join in with us. We believe the Lord has a word for us tonight. How many are glad that we're able to be able to be in the house of the Lord while all these things that are going on? I'm just thankful there that we have one that we can hold on to. I've got an anchor. Anybody got an anchor tonight that we can hold on to? Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look to the Lord and get to the Lord in prayer together. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to be able to approach the throne of grace to receive help again in the time of need. Just asking the Lord Jesus to touch, Lord, into everyone that's gathered here tonight and not one to be able to leave in the same manner which they come. Holy Ghost, have your way. In this service tonight, ministering to each and every need, and may we be strengthened and encouraged as we go forth, Lord, as your disciples, dear God, telling, Lord, people of the hope that lies within us in the days of your coming. Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory and honor for everything that we'll be accomplishing in service in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. If you have a hymn to turn to 169, sing along with us, let my light be a light. Anybody want your light to shine? Now you have to remember Jesus said, let it shine. Anybody know the difference between letting it shine and shining on somebody? Anybody understand? How many of you ever tried to shine it on somebody? What did you do? Kind of made them a little bit upset, didn't it? Praise the Lord. Let's let it shine. Amen. It has a bit. Let's sing it together. I want you to sing it like you mean it tonight. Amen. Let me live, bless me, Lord, in the light of thy word. Let my life be a light on thee. Leading souls now astray to the street, that way. Help me do some good deed while I live. Let my life be a light. Shining out through the light, may I help struggling ones to the fold. Spreading cheer everywhere to the sad and the lone. Let my life be a light to some soul. Give me wisdom and power every day. Every hour, let me bring from the mountains above. Guide my footsteps aright through the dark, stormy night. Give me peace, give me joy, give me love. Let my life be your life, shining out through the night. May I help struggling one to the fold. Spreading cheer everywhere to the side and the low. Let my life be a light to some soul. Give me souls for my heart. Let my light be on fire, shining out. To the world as a guide. Help me rescue someone sinking down with no hope that in the heaven we shall never abide. Oh, let my life be a light shining out through the light. May I help struggling one to the Spreading cheer everywhere to the sad and the low. Let my life be a light to one more time. Oh, let my life be a light shining out through the night. May I help struggling one to the fold. Spreading cheer everywhere. To the sad and the low, let my life be a light to some soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you believe in your life? In order for your life to shine, you need to have victory, don't you? Yes. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank God Christ has redeemed us yes. from the curse of the law. He has made a curse for us when he bridged curses in and made the hand of the curse. And I'm thankful that he took the curse away, Brother Mac, made it possible for us. Amen. One day live with him. We want to look to the Lord and look to the Lord in prayer tonight. We want to remember uh, there and uh, this violence is still continuing on. Uh, Brother Donald Honeycutt uh, there and his wife uh, there from their daughter in the community that contacted him. Also, let's occasionally make, let's remember Sister Huffman in our prayer. She's in the hospital with pneumonia, and uh, the Lord will touch her. I believe she will be coming out in a couple of days, and uh, I'm not sure where she'll go for some rehab or be out of home, but let's lift her up in prayer. Let's also pray for God to touch her appetite there. She'll have an appetite uh, to uh, uh, Lori Jernica, let's remember her in prayer. She's got this daughter. Let's remember her there. She's uh, got a bite and uh, there. And that's the, that's the last that I, I suppose that we see there on the time. Uh, uh, but uh, pray that she's doing better. Anyone else? How do you remember? Let's also remember in Sister Debbie, Deborah Murphy's house. Um, today was my first day working back there in, since March, and um, so a lot. Um, we have an advantage over the women's clinic since the fact that we offer ultrasounds, and so we have been getting a lot of referrals of abortion-minded young ladies, and um, we just need to hold them up in prayer, hold the the pregnancy centers up in prayer that we would be anointed for the work to be able to uh, reach these mothers before they make that decision. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Keep my son in prayer, brother. Let's remember that in prayer. Let's also remember all of our, our people that God would minister to them and bless them, those there. Uh, there's a cause of age, just like Sister Floyd was telling me tonight. Her brother, uh, her son, I believe, is, is uh, telling him he's 95 years old. Remember them in prayer, our loved ones. How many of you know that it's at the time to get serious with our loved ones and get them on our hearts and intercede on their behalf? Pray, seek God. And those that, uh, for whatever reason, they have become uh, sort of in a sort of, uh, I, I would say, it was a lukewarm state. Some of them are completely backslid and don't even know it because they don't have a continued relationship for us with God. How many of you, how many of you would agree with me if we don't eat, we're going to starve? And how many of you believe that if we don't feed the spiritual man, he's going to stop? Yeah. He'll die. He won't have to be feeding the spiritual man. Let's remember those in prayer. Anyone else? Yes. Let's remember Nathan. Today was supposed to be a court day. And got those home or three off again. That little boy's in limbo. He needs stability. He needs stability there in, in, in that, that part. And he's not the only one like that. He lives in all across this uh, nation and in the same here. condition as he's in. Anyone else? Pastor Hyde text got the message to Deborah Murphy. Uh, Danny Hill and the other girl that was staying with him, Grinley, was ex um, last week staying in a hotel or room with a lady that contracted the COVID and they have been tested. Uh, Sister Deborah was asking prayer for Daniel and Glenn as well. Let's remember them in prayer. Amen. Anyone else? Let's take these needs to the Lord in prayer. Brother Clay, would you lead us to the Lord in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we return the great and the practical decree of the Lord that we have. 
Lord, to come before the throne of grace and receive help in the time of need. Lord, all of these needs that have been brought to our attention, Lord, we pray in your pardon. In behalf of those, Lord, who have contacted, Lord Jesus, Lord, COVID-19, asking the Lord Jesus to make for the them and touch them, Lord, we pray in a special way. Lord, we're still looking to you and trusting you. Dear Lord God, Lord, of our people here in Smithfield Church of God, I just believe, I believe, dear God, that you're going to help us and enable us, dear God, and I just stay clear of this. You did the kill of this one. Lord, we're just asking you, Lord, to touch, Lord, we pray, Lord, Lord, in the home, Lord, and yeah, Lord, Jesus, and Lord, that family, as we minister to them, we pray, Lord, for others, Lord, we pray for Westport Church of God, pray for Donnie Huntington, and Rihanna, and others, Lord, to keep in touch with them, pray for the nation, Lord, missionaries, keep it all around this world, Lord, we pray for the Bible, we pray for you, God, for our loved ones, Lord God, that they are not awakened, Lord, to what time it is. We pray, Lord Jesus, for Daniel. We pray for Tim. Ask the dear Lord Jesus to lead, Lord, we pray, in a special way into their lives. Opening up your understanding, dear God. The Bible very clearly says that the word be here to live in their lives. And Lord, may they be awakened, knowing the time that is high time to break out of sleep. Pray for every up in some hand we pray. Pray for Sister Huffman. You'll continue, Lord, to bring healing into her body and touch in her in a special way. And our people, Lord, we pray. All of our seniors, we're asking you, Lord, to touch them and minister to them, Lord. We pray in a special way. We want to thank you, Lord, and give you all the praise and the glory. Lord Jesus, Lord God, for keeping us and blessing your people. Every up in some hand request, minister to those needs. We pray in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask Brother Shane to say that you would come stand just, just drop it right in. Dearly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you blessed us with, Lord, and for the opportunity to come into your house and just worship you and give you the praise, Lord. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing, Lord. We thank you for this, this body, and we thank you for what you're doing in us at this time, Lord. And Lord, I pray you, Lord, that you give you this, this tithe and offering, Lord, as we bring it back to your storehouse, Lord, and build your kingdom here on earth, Lord. And we're just excited about what you're doing, and we just praise what you're doing, Lord. And we thank you, Father. Bless the gift. Love you and give you praise in Jesus' Thank name. You, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good evening. If you would go to the Facebook page for Great Unity Assembly of God, they have, um, do you see that this picture is mixed? Um, I have a slide that says that, I believe. Okay. Um, they have um, organized a prayer walk in Smithfield. It begins July the 11th at 10 o'clock. I'm hoping that uh, we will have a good showing from our church. We're going to try to, to be there. Um, I have contacted him. I have not heard back from him yet. But they are going to uh, provide water. They're going to ask that, um, as the governor has, when you go out in public, to wear uh, face, face covering. And they're going to ask you to park in the courthouse parking lot. And they're going to begin at the... What's that word? What's that word? Have you read? Centenary, the Centenary UNC Church. I think you might have got this church downtown. Um, but I think it's something that we can support them in doing as a local uh, community. And so uh, if you go to their website, it's up on there, and we uh, will announce it more, um, uh, more in depth on this coming Sunday.
one day. And also, I want to say we do appreciate the sermon that Brother Jesse brought to us this past Sunday night. And it's another Sunday night, Brother Clay. Oh, I didn't <laughs> say that. Brother Clay will be speaking this coming Sunday night. And I also would like to, um, for our church, to wish Pastor Jerry Walker tomorrow is his 64th birthday.
and the honor for that which is accomplished for us in Jesus' name. We ask it all. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, I'd like for you to turn over with me to Isaiah chapter 26. You may be seated. Isaiah chapter 26, and I want to read verse 8 and 9. In your hearing. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8 and 9. This is what it says. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for you, and the desire of our soul is in thy name, and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me, will I seek thee early. I want you to underscore this. If you don't have this, you need to really get this in your spirit. He says, for when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. The seven trumpet judgments that we're going to be here referring to and going to tonight are going to be partial here. And this is a means that the Lord is using to bring people there to repent. How many of you believe tonight that God will do everything possible to bring people to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? I want you to keep this in mind. Ezekiel chapter 18, the Bible very clearly says that the Lord gets no pleasure out of the death of the wicked. You know, when Jesus, kind of feel the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was getting ready to go to Jerusalem, the Bible said like a flint, he would go to Jerusalem. Why? He knew he was going to die. Why would he? Because he loves you and me. He loves your children. He loves your loved ones, and he wants them to be saved. That's why the Lord here in chapter 8 of Revelation here, the first four verses, is giving you there uh, this wonderful uh, uh, picture of the prayers of those who have prayed. I believe the prayers that you are praying uh, needs to be more than a little five-minute prayer. I believe we need some intercessory prayer and people praying and seeking God in behalf of our loved ones. And I believe the Lord will pour those out. Let's pray that the Lord will do it before the rapture of the church. And they come in before, not in the church. I don't want them to go into that horrible time. But what like the world is never been. You th they think it's bad now. I want to say something to you tonight as we go into these here trumpet judgments. There are a lot of people that believe this is symbolic. Let that sink in. They do not believe it's going to be literal. I'm telling you folks, and some folks in the church world are going to be in a rude awakening when they go into the tribulation period because they will not be ready. They will not be ready, but they are literally here. Uh, they are literally uh, literal as far as fulfilling. So if you're there as far as on the lap line, we're going into, uh, going to number here 34. We talked last week about the prayers as far as uh, uh, in heaven and silence. A 34 was Jesus Christ. Number 35, number 35, if you're there, the sounding of the first trumpet. Now, I want you to, uh, uh, to keep in mind that uh, preachers down to the, how many of you remember John the Baptist? What was his message when he came? His message was he warned them to flee from something. He warned them to flee from the wrath to come. His message was a message of repentance. When Jesus came, did he change the message from John the Baptist? Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5, the scriptures twice says, Jesus would say to them, talking about the tower of Siloam that would fall down, Jesus said to them, Nay, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Christ's message was the same. So from the time of John the Baptist until this very day, there are preachers that are standing in the pulpit today. They are not preaching that message, but they're the ones going to answer to God for it. But the message that I believe is the most relevant today is to repent of every sin, search your heart and life, and be ready to go at that midnight hour when the trumpet of God sounds. Number 34 here is the sounding of the first trumpet, and it brings hail and fire mingled with blood. 
mingled. So this hail and fire mingled with blood is going to engulf one third of the world's population. I want you to turn over with me to, uh, uh, I got to, got to find it here. I know I've got it here. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Joel chapter 2. And I want to, uh, you to see something here. Uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 30 through 32. He tells us here, he, he's, he's basically dealing here at bars with the same thing. And so we see here, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Does this sound like symbolic to you? He said, I will... Uh, and then he says, and the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass. And you are thankful for this verse. In that day, your loved ones, if they're here, and you told them, whatever you do, please, whatever you do, don't take the mark of the beast. And I'm telling folks that before the vaccine ever gets here, don't take it either. Yeah. Well, I, you know, they're telling us there that, that everybody's going to have to take it, though everybody don't. Right. I mean, you're gonna, if, if they were to get you the mark of the beast, you're going to take it. I can tell you this year, that vaccine, if you read from what I'm understanding, it's going to be in it. They're going to have pig urine in it. They're going to have DNA from aborted fetuses. It's going to be in this vaccine. Murphy's going to be in another thing. But well, it, 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 it spares from COVID-19. Well, uh, uh, I, I, let me tell you this. I'm going to get COVID-19 to take it. I mean, that's just me. I mean, it's as far as up to you. That's your, your prerogative, and I'm not going to be mad at it if you take it. That's your business. Come on, somebody help me. That's your business. That's right. But not me. So I can tell you this, and I, I believe there's a reason why the immune system and things that it is is because of the vaccine that folks have been taking. That's right. 40 million people, according to a lady that worked in it, said they hijacked sock for over 30 some years. Forty some million people have contacted Karen, a cancer, from the vaccine. And autism has gone up. I, I would like to know the percentage. If somebody could find that out for me, I would love to know that they said it's down to 29. It used to be 2,900 or 29,000 as far as with autism. And now there are kids that are being born. One out of 29 are now uh, getting autism. And for those evidently from the vaccine. But notice here, here, uh, he said, so we're now, I don't know about you, but we are already witnessing softball sized hail that knocks out car windows. Anybody ever aware of that? Yes. Knocked out. It's done great damage. So, so I, I saw on, uh, on, um, uh, Thomas F. Day News, they showed it that hail was almost up to the top of a car. Uh, it come that much hail wherever that uh, was at. And so it's going to be in different parts part of the world and the hail that's coming. And so uh, Brother Smith uh, brought out this. He said, this will be like those plagues the Egyptians witnessed when God delivered the children of Israel. And, uh, and worse, uh, the hail will literally here kill people. Buildings and trees will be destroyed from the fallout of fire and hail. Literally, the powers of heaven are going to be shaken. There, we see this here far as in, in Job. There will be a stink like most humans have never smelled. Anybody ever smelt uh, their burning flesh or anything like that? They tell me it is very, very, uh, it's awful. Brother, Brother David, you, it, 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 I had to burn my uniform. I couldn't get the smell out of my uniform. Couldn't get the smell out of your uniform. Well, can you imagine for people during this time and have died? In fact, if you go over uh, there in, uh, uh, in Ezekiel, it's going to take them seven months to bury the dead. Uh, there in Ezekiel, I think it's 38 and 39, when that war of the Battle of Hamadon. Uh, takes place, and so you're talking. So here in this area, so the smell will literally be here unbearable. But this here, notice this: this is partial judgment. What is it that God is doing? God is pouring out these judgments in, in, in response to their hope that men will repent. But if you're going to find
find out a lot of people will not repent. Why? His heart has become so hardened and so callous towards God that they still will not repent. I thought about this, and I, I, I put this in several places here, but I, I truly believe this. You're going to be so glad that, that you serve the Lord, that you live for Him, and that you were ready for the rapture of the church, and that you are uh, there. And now that it's occurred, and you're there in the presence of the Lord forever, you're going to be glad. Number 36, some of the plagues are repetition here of the plagues God sent on Egypt. Now, this is very interesting here, what Brother Smith brings out here on this part, because God is judging mankind for the way they have treated his Jewish people. Wow. How many of you thankful there? You know, uh, it, it, it's going to become a couple of, of trembling for the nations that and he says, woe to them that it parted my land. I don't want no part of that. I hope America doesn't take part. And then also the, uh, the uh, prop propagation here or the spread of the gospel. Those who have done everything possible to stop or to hinder the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can tell you these here governors who are doing everything that they can to try to silence Christianity, try to close the churches, try to stop the spread of the gospel in any kind of manner are going to be in deep trouble when they face God in judgment. Here, this is what God is, is, is doing. So uh, there I want us to keep this in mind. Missionaries that have, have literally starved to death, been beaten to death. So I watched uh, there, the man in Seattle there that was telling the people, preaching there to the gospel to those people, and they literally seized his stuff, was dragging him, doing all kinds of stuff there, and trying to stop the gospel. That, 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 they, they still can do that. Uh, it, listen, we are we're no different than John the Baptist. They cut his head off for preaching simply the gospel. The good news, can you imagine? We are literally seeing history repeating itself here, but they're going... Uh, uh, and I thought about how long the suffering that God has been. He's given humanity unmistakable signs, even in this very day. A lot, a lot of people are acknowledging, 40 to 50 percent of people are acknowledging that God is the one that is allowing this to COVID-19. Those that don't believe that God is doing that, uh, there they're going to find out in the tribulation period when God opens up the sky that it is God who is pouring out the judgment upon it. Those people who tell you and me, oh, God wouldn't do that thing. I'm telling you, they're getting ready to find out. Who is in control? How many of you believe he's watching over you and me? Yeah. I, I believe, I, no question for that. But here, the, the point is, is there uh, to his coming. Preachers and, and, and all those uh, prophetical voices have been calling on men to repent and receive forgiveness from their sins. So you and I, we can and we may, as so many have done, they're choosing willful ignorance in our day. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 5, but not with God. He's commanded men, all men everywhere to repent. Today, the, the Father is pitying men and continues to hold back his wrath and stand at the door and knock as Savior and Lord. And at the same time, he reminds us that his spirit will not always strive with man. It's coming a day when God will not hear men anymore. Can you imagine? In Proverbs chapter 1, I told that you refused. You would none of my reproof. He said, I'm going to laugh at you when your calamity comes. And when that day comes, oh, my, my, I'm calling my loved ones daily in prayer. I'm telling them in prayer and praying, oh, God, wake them up to a reality. I don't believe this is going to happen. But I'm telling you, they may be trying to destroy our history, but they don't realize we're going to repeat history. It's coming back again. Men are literally going to kill one another. All of these things are going to happen in that time and cause and he here trying to wake up mankind. He says he won't always strive with man. How much longer? Uh, how much longer is it before God is going to pour out his wrath? Would you turn with me to Psalms chapter 94? As I was studying today and preparing for tonight, the Lord brought uh, this here uh, to my 
remember, my friend Brother Katie Collins gave me the scripture. I'd like to read a bigger part of this song here as we are, as we're going here with it. If you're there watching us on Facebook Live, let me encourage you to, to get your Bible and follow with me. Okay, let me ask you this question. How much longer is God going to put up with the wickedness that's in our day? I believe we've got an answer here, and I believe we're on the verge of this happening. And I'll, I'll show you when I get there to it. Let's read this together, Psalms 94. Oh, Lord God. So <laughs> here, <coughs> it's, it's mentioned in here. Uh, the Lord, means, uh, in the Hebrew here, God is shining forth. To whom vengeance belongeth. How many of you know that vengeance belongs to God? He's going to have his day. Right now, he's merciful. Oh, God, to whom vengeance belongeth. So it's a double here, I mean. And here, show thyself, or shine forth. And uh, literally here, oh, Lord God, is a God of vengeance. Uh, here on, on his image to whom Jesus belongs. And so it says it literally three times here. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Now he's asking a question in verse 3. Lord, how long shall the wicked, twice, how long shall the wicked triumphant? In Psalms 30, uh, 24 in verse 1, the Bible said that earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. I said that for this. The devil's crowd thinks they got this world in a handbasket with Satan or their master. They think that they're going to win. The Luciferians think that they're going to win. But I've got news for them. Jesus said, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. There's coming a day when he's going to see him with that one angel. He's going to take a hold of Satan and throw him in a bottomless pit. Yeah. And it's going to be a glorious reign with Christ for a thousand years on earth. I'm telling you, the Lord is going to have a, a, his day. He's long suffering. He's merciful now. And the devil's the crowd thinks that he's forgotten down here. He's forgotten us, and they're going to win us over. But well, I'd rather die than to fall for the devil's crown. I ain't mean, nothing that I see in that's appetizing to me. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ and his love for me. Oh, I fell in love with him a long time ago. And I haven't fell out of love with him. Praise God. So how long? So he's asking this question. How long are the wicked going to triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? They're doing that right now. Anybody believe that? He goes on, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. Yeah. They stand up and boast themselves. We'll shut you down. Well, I got news for Cuomo and, and whatever his the mayor's name is. Jesus said these words Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Hallelujah, no matter what they say and do, it ain't over yet. Amen. Uh, you know, I, they're, they're huffing the puppet. <laughs> so how many of you know they can't blow this house in because we're still on the rock? <laughs> so let's, let's go on here. I'm getting all excited about this thing here. But they're boasting now. They break in pieces by people. They got folks all stirred up. They got, our, got good Christian folks in, in, a, in a friendship. Help me. They really do. They call fear and panic among the body of Christ. You say, are you minimizing? No, I ain't minimizing. But I want to ask you this question. Where's our faith at? How many of you believe God can keep us from it? You say, but so and so caught it. Well, that's true. They may have caught it in no way on the just and the other but I believe if I cover myself in the morning bars with prayer, I keep on looking for the Lord. The Lord can keep me running. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I believe that. Sir. They break in peace inside people. Oh, Lord, and they break down heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fathers. Oh, wow. Yet they say, the Lord will not see. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. That's literally here, pay heed to it. Oh, now, your God, he did. They think the call sentence is not executed speedily upon an evil work in part to put us into the evil. Good verse of scripture for you to write right down. Side of that verse of scripture to go back to 
Did you see this? Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. 8 and 11 there. Let's go over to bear with it. I'm putting my Bible. Understand, ye brutish, among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? You see what God just calls in? <laughs> in Psalms 14 and 1, the Bible says the fool is saying in his heart there's no God. Right. And they're saying here, God is saying to them, when are you going to be wise? When are you going to wake up? When are you going to get out of your slumber and sleep here? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that pulled the eye, shall he not see? He that takes it to the heathen, shall not he correct? He's going to correct. He's going to correct to the wrong. He that teaches me in knowledge shall not he know. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. Here's your answer, church. How long? How much longer? Is the wicked going to cry up? I love this. It says that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be big for the wicked. There's a pit getting ready to be dug, and I believe it's going to be a large earthquake. A large earthquake that's going to come. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as we go on. So we see here, as, as we look, let's look at number here. So all of those uh, there, so how much longer? I believe here the clock's about to strike midnight, and the door will be shut. Matthew 25 and 10, and all of those that are left behind had spots and blemishes upon their garments and did not keep them washed on a daily basis there. Are you propagating for us then? No. I wasn't convicted of anything as far as today. How many of you believe the Lord will, will convict you when you do something other wrong? You get it right, right then. And, and then. But I pray and say, Lord, search me. Anybody pray that prayer? I pray that prayer every day. Lord, search me. If there's anything that I've said or done, you know, I pray for God to, to give me wisdom and all my words will be seasoned with salt. So, the wise that was ready. It's going to be as it were there in Egypt at the midnight hour, that cry that was made there. And there, the one going to be taken the other left. He's talking about a time. Look at number 37 here. The sounding of the second trumpet brings a burning mountain. Brings a burning mountain or meter that falls into the Mediterranean Sea. So the second trumpet here is, is brings a burning mountain or meter that falls into the Mediterranean Sea, and a third part of the sea becomes blood. In Exodus chapter 7, 19 through 21, the first plague in Egypt was upon the Nile River. <laughs> now, it's interesting here, there I was listening to Brother Smith, this is what he said, one third of Antichrist Navy will be dealt a terrible blow from Almighty God who rises up and fights against him as he did in various day. With a meteorite. I mean, they think that they've got him. They think that they're going to push her in the sea, but I've already read Amos chapter, I think it's 11, the last verse. They think that they're going to push Israel into the sea, but God says, when I bring you back into your homeland, yes, they're going to have to run to Peter in the middle part of the tribulation period, but they are not going to destroy Israel. They think that they're literally going to destroy but the God of heaven that fought in the days of the burial and though he's going to rise up and fight again for the children of Israel. They are God's chosen people. They might as well go ahead and accept it uh, there, but they think that they're the, the Palestinians and all the parts of those Arabs and those descendants uh, there, but God's going to fight for us for Israel. And he says, and the third part of the sea becomes blood. So blood there. And notice this there. Ships are destroying the third part of creatures in sea die from it. They've been telling a lot lately there that uh, uh, about meters. How many of you read lately about asteroids that slide through through the earth? They say they're getting closer. Is it possible that the Lord is already sending a message? Okay, it was further out. But they're getting so much closer now, and one of them is going to finally hit. Okay.
okay, this one that hit, what, what's it going to be like? Can you imagine here what it's going to be? You can't imagine. Maybe as uh, far as a couple of a couple of years ago, uh, there on in New Jersey, it didn't, I don't know where anybody else saw it, but I saw it. Karen were washed on the floor, uh, on the shore. There was two million pounds, two million pounds of carrots that were washed on shore in New Jersey a few years ago. Been about three, I think. About three years ago, it was washed on. So you can, can you imagine this thing here? That's going to be when God does this here. A third part of the sea becomes blood. The creatures there begin. Uh, they die. They're literally in the sea. We're already seeing large amounts of fish deaths occurring. Not only there, but around around the world. I've seen quite a number of that occur. And the Bible says here, a third part of them will die. Now, keep in mind that these are partial judgment here for God to bring these people to repentance. So verses 10 and 11 there, number 38, we see here the third trumpet. And so it brings us here, this third trumpet brings a great star or a meteor that will fall upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water that are in the world. The name of the star is Wormwood, and it is deadly poison. I want us to keep that in mind. This is interesting here, and I share their information there when I use Brother Smith there to credit him for this. Brother Smith here says that the French uh, there, those, those that drink French wine, uh, listen at me really good here. They put a little bit of this wormwood wood in their wine and perfume. Now, let this sink in. I don't know why that they would do this because a little, when a little is consumed, you can go blind. A little more can cause you to lose your balance. And a little more will kill you like a bullet. And they put some of this in people. I don't know why. I don't think I might have had any idea. I don't, I don't, I don't drink, never have drunk any of it. But if I was, was drinking and I knew that that was in it, I'd stop quick. Anybody here want to go blind? So, with that in mind here, let me emphasize that these are literal judgments. They're not symbolic. This will be a fulfillment of Jeremiah. If we can go there. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 13 through 15. This is a literal fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 13 through 15. And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice. Now let that keep in mind for the church who is not obeying the Lord's command. He has not. It is trust and obey. This is what he says here as far as the difference. They have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, but have walked after the imaginations of their own heart. And after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. Millions will die. If only they had believed the apostles, if only they had believed the prophets and believed the gospel. Oh my, it could have been so much better. But millions will die. Millions will die. Number 39, we're going to stop. A large percentage of the world's underground water supply comes from Antarctica. This is interesting. Can you imagine how many will die if this meter hits the Antarctic? Where, listen carefully, the National Geographic says over two-thirds of fresh water supply comes from there and goes all over the world, underground river 
Jerusalem destroyed. The fresh water came. But that immediate meteorite was to hit Antarctica. It would contaminate two-thirds of the world today. Wow. So with all these judgments coming on, coming one behind another, you would think men would repent. But they loved darkness rather than light. If they had chosen the light, they would see that the signs that point to his coming any day, if they literally believed, but men, they loved the darkness. They loved darkness rather than light. I don't know, know about you, but I'm so thankful that I've been brought into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are just a little sample here, partial judgment. When you get over into the bold judgments, they are uh, 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 the full, really, the, bo uh, uh, the bold judgment. We call them bold instead of vile because they're poured out uh, uh, upon, upon humanity. And uh, that day is, is, is upon us. The Lord's coming is close at hand. And I want to be ready. Our loved ones, these things that are coming, those who don't believe it, don't let nobody tell you that these are symbolic. These are literal judgments that are literally going to be poured out upon this earth. I'll ask you this question. Do you think that we are going, you say, well, we're under the grace dispensation. Yes, and thank God that we are. But if you, if, if you think that God is, and he's doing this upon the children of Israel where the bigger part of this will take place, do you think he's going to, we're going to be spared from that if we are not where we are to be with the Lord during that tribulation period? I, I don't believe that. I want us to come. I want us to stand. I want us to join tonight. Uh, these, these here that we're going into is a little bit different than what it is before, but I believe we need to know these things. And hopefully there we're gleaning from this and where we can be able to tell with other people. Uh, uh, there. Can you imagine what a person is going to be like if he wants to get some fresh water when he goes there? It's going to be blood. Just like it was as far as the children of Israel down before that they were delivered. The Lord is, is, is sending a message to us. How many of you got loved ones you want to see saved? I wonder if we make an altar where we are. Some can come as far as around the altar uh, that can. And let us pray and ask God, oh God, touch us now. If we've ever needed, if the church ever needs to be open, if the church, if the church ever needs to be open, if so, if we are all of us that are there and need to be lives to be changed, it's the time in which we're living. Oh God, help us. Lord, we pray for those on Facebook Live. We pray for those that join us on the web page. Lord, in these plagues, Lord, that are going to be poured out. It ain't going to be nothing compared to COVID 19. Oh, that they, they can, Lord, recover from COVID-19. Uh, they're only 1% or die. But in these places that we talked about tonight, there are going to be thousands upon thousands of people that are going to die from that word, word, that poisonous water that's going to be, Lord, teach us in that time. I pray for my loved ones. I pray for those. I pray for you, God. Oh, Lord, I love my brothers and my sisters, and I pray for them. I pray that their eyes will be open. I pray that they will be awake to go, God. Give us revival in Smithfield. Give us revival, oh God. I pray, oh Lord Jesus, help me, Lord, to rally, Lord Jesus, Lord, your people. Lord Jesus, you told me to leave the whole big garrison. Oh, my God, I want Lord Jesus to, uh, to rally, Lord, your troops as we go forth, as we pray, as we bind together, Lord, in intercessory prayer for our loved ones. Mighty God, pour out thy spirit, Lord, just one more time. You promised, O oh Lord, the earth is a ladder rain, James 5, a 5, Lord, be patient, therefore, for the coming of the Lord, behold, a husband waited for the early and the latter rain. Lord, I believe you're going to pour out, Lord Jesus, Lord, your spirit upon a core, Lord, of believers to you, God, Lord, in the church, Lord, that Oh, Lord, and they, Lord, would be without spot and wrinkle. Those, Lord, who are hungry after you, as the children of Israel. Lord, we pray to you, God, for, Lord, our administrative bishop. We pray for the church of God across East and North Carolina, for the state council, for the youth board, our youth director, Brother Wayne Morey. We pray for him. We pray for our churches, our pastors, Lord, to await you, God. Lord Jesus, to the nearest of your coming, and to preach the word, to stand here, God, for him bold as a lion, and proclaim your eternal truths, calling in to search the 
hearts and their lives and tell every sin and turn away from every sin and every besetting sin. And, uh, oh, mighty God, I thank you, Lord, and I give you praise. Uh, Lord, touch your people, God. Touch our families, our loved ones, Lord. Uh, I pray that you would, Lord, stir them. Uh, stir them, oh, God. I pray for, Lord Jesus, our children. Uh, I pray for them. I pray that they will be awakened, Lord. Uh, pray for, Lord, our church. Uh, pray for our people, dear God. Uh, Lord, we're doing all we know to do, Lord Jesus, Lord God, for protection. Oh, Lord, we're having the church clean. We're, Lord, doing, Lord, so we're, Lord, our lives are in your hands. We're trusting you. Lord, to keep us, Lord, I pray for COVID-19. I pray for those, Lord Jesus, that have contacted it. Brothers and sisters, dear God, we pray for Westmore Church of God. Almighty oh, God, I pray, dear God, across Stephen, North Carolina, we pray across America, God, around this world. Oh, God, touch, Lord. Bless the Larry Mason, Lord, our missionary. Bless him, Lord. We pray for our pastors. I pray for Alan Justin, Lord. I pray you, God, your blessings on him. Lord, it's been had head surgery. Ask you to touch him. Other pastors, Lord, touch your people. Strengthen them, oh, God. Oh, Lord, this is coming. It's at the door. At the door. It's almost here. Lord, and we pray you, God, for those that Lord Jesus, for whatever reason, Lord God, and Almighty oh, God, this is, Lord, they need to know these things. They need to be prepared for themselves. Oh, God, I pray for those, Lord Jesus, that have lost heart, that are discouraged, Lord, or fearful, Lord Jesus, or faint-hearted. I pray for them. Lord, they are precious. They are special, Lord. You saved them. You brought them out of Egypt. Lord, and I pray that there not be a feeble one among us, <coughs> among your people, oh God. Give strength, Lord. I pray you, God, for each one. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for my family. I pray you would watch them. Watch over them, Lord. Keep them, Lord. Oh, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Give me praise. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Say is we don't need to know these things because we're not going to be here. Well, seventy five percent of the church world if it's left behind will be here. So I want to you want to do everything you could to, to be ready to go into rapture. So I want to encourage you there to make your calling and election sure. Make preparations. Tell your loved ones. Pray fast. Seek the Lord. Get the mind of God and receive a word from the Lord that you might be able to help help them. I, I'm challenging my own family, my children, my, my grandchildren to get close to God. Get close to God and walk with the Lord. God bless you for being the Lord past today. Thank you for joining with us on Facebook Live. I want to encourage you. I want to welcome you there here Sunday. And uh, there if you, you come, you wear a mask, that's fine. But we are not mandated to more to wear masks or to the service. I'm not saying that you can't do that. All I'm saying is, is that we're not going to, I'm not going to mandate it for the people to do that. But if you feel better to come and do that, 